Hey, what's up, Zach here. And today I have the all new Way of Wade 10. And these are all the reasons you may or may not wanna buy them. And thanks to Way of Wade for sending me these prior to release to check out. However, this video is not sponsored. They're not seeing this video before you. And of course, all opinions are still my own. All right, let's get into them. Now the Way of Wade 10, as I kind of sweep up bits of carbon fiber all over my table, uh, is quite an interesting upgrade from the Way of Wade 9s, mainly in the areas of cushioning and in the uppers. Now what I found interesting about the design inspiration for the uppers is they're supposed to resemble dragonflies wings. And I found that really interesting with more of this reflective material here on the outermost layer, but then a little bit more of an elastic material here, which is also ultra breathable mesh underneath of these. So for a little bit more of a bigger shoe, a little bit more of an encased shoe and TPU in the uppers, they still retain a lot of breathability. And speaking of that ultralight upper construction, what I think my favorite part about the uppers is, is how they didn't skimp on the lace eyelets. You can see here, this is all reinforced with a little bit more of like this synthetic leather material material on the inside and outside of the shoe. So the lockdown on these is still tremendous, even for a shoe that has feather light mesh uppers. And on the upper durability test, the Dremel 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper, as you can see here, this toe cap guard has about three layers. One is just the rubber from the shoe. The next is that TPU encasement way up here on the toe guard, which is basically just protecting your toenails. And then there's this little toe drag wrap. Now that Dremel just bites right through that wrap and gets kind of into the pink layer, which is the underneath mesh elastic layer. So if you are going to be really extreme dragging your toes on a more gritty outdoor surface. You are gonna burn right through these. However, on an indoor surface, or if you're not just a really extreme toe dragger, you're gonna have just as much protection as you need. And getting into the midsole teardown, just like the way of Wade Infinity 9, these took me forever to get through because of that ultra long carbon fiber plate. And I do still have carbon fiber all over this desk. However, what I think is so interesting about the midsole of the way of Wade 10 is that they've made that carbon fiber so incredibly long all the way from the mid part of your heel all the way to the mid part of your forefoot. So this is a true encasing carbon fiber. What I like about that is they made it light enough and thin enough where they could actually mold it to your arch and long enough to where that lighter carbon fiber is actually going to give you more of a cantilever or diving board effect. Because remember, if you make carbon fiber too short, you can't mold it to the shoe and it just kind of just becomes a lighter, more uncomfortable type of shank. Whereas if you can make it long enough, it'll give you that real snap that a lot of people are looking for when they start looking for carbon fiber shank shoes. And even more interesting than the almost full length carbon fiber is that the entire midsole is TPU. It's that PebEx foam, that boom technology they call it. Even in the casing around the shoe, this is a TPU casing on the inside as well as here on the outside. So this is all plastic based foam. And if you look at the jump height test, still got 39.5 centimeters on that jump height test. And typically on TPU based foams, you're not getting as much spring back in the shoe because it's meant more for shock absorption. However, here in the way of wades, because that carbon fiber shank is actually able to do its job, that midsole foam is able to compress and spring back really nice on you, giving a really decent jump height profile to the shoe. But what I really think is gonna be the most polarizing part of these shoes is the outsole tread. Now, if you look at the tread pattern, it's a radial pattern in the heel, and it goes up into more of a rippling pattern, almost quasi herringbone in the forefoot. Now, way of wade does advertise this as being waterproof, so you can actually use these on slicker quartz. And what I found interestingly enough is that on indoor hardwood, whether it be dusty, really poorly maintained or perfectly maintained hardwood, these things gripped like crazy. These were some of the best gripping shoes I have ever tried. And that includes the Kyrie three player exclusives that I just cut open. The ones that are actually made for him. These things stop on a dime and they move so quickly off the jump. The one thing I also noticed though was on just standard black top quartz, these actually had a little bit more give. And that's just because the tread is so thin. So it's meant to grab more organic surfaces and it's meant to interact with more slick surfaces. So on painted outdoor courts, they also gripped like crazy. They were really nice, had a nice profile. And I had really zero issues at all with slippage. It was just on the black top, the more gritty stuff that I kind of found myself sliding a little bit. And the reason for that is I mean, you can just look at a car tire or an outdoor tennis court shoe. For a more gritty black top type court, you need a little bit flatter type treads, you need more chunky type channels in there so you can get more surface area contact to lay down more rubber and those big chunky channels so that when you're moving side to side, you got a big broad ridge to grip into. So that traction profile really made the shuttle test interesting for me. I came at 14.61 seconds and for the profile of the shoe, I thought that was really good, but I don't think that the treads were really the reason. Yeah, they gripped well on that outdoor painted court. However, I think the thing that made that test go as fast as it did was that the PebEx foam in the back 
here is rounded off so much with that carbon fiber that when you put these shoes on, it almost feels like there's a bubble or a spring underneath your heel kind of pushing you back up. And that's that carbon fiber going all the way back in the shoe, kind of pushing that Pebex foam up under your heel. So every time you're pivoting or pushing really hard, especially on the mid and rear foot of the shoe, like when you're trying to take turns really quick, the shoe just springs back to life on you. You can almost feel the shoe compressing and popping back. So I thought that was super interesting is that you're almost getting assistance on corners. And when we get into the playability of these, that also presents some really interesting things these shoes can do for you on the basketball court specifically. Now, if you watch these videos a lot, you'll know I kind of go in a sequence these. I kind of like to evaluate shoes in the same way every time. And so I just got done doing the durometer test on these. And this is the first time this has ever happened. Every single site I put the durometer on here, it was the exact same reading, which was 15, which is just a pretty medium to hard rubber compound, which is what I expected to see. However, it's the consistency of the rubber across the whole shoe that I really have never seen before. Typically that rubber will have some blemishes in it from here or there, especially because I play in these shoes before I do the durometer test. And I thought that was really interesting in terms of manufacturing quality, that these are really built very consistently. So it's nice to see a little bit more quality control on the rubber and that you're getting consistency across the whole shoe, which to me is gonna improve performance just by improving confidence. The one minus to that though, is if you look at the outsole durability test, the Dremel 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper, Dremel bites right through this. This is a three millimeter tread depth, got almost two millimeters of damage on that. So like I said, for really gritty outdoor asphalt courts, especially on hot, humid days, you are going to start to burn through this rubber. So if you are gonna be buying these, I would be buying these for more smooth painted outdoor courts as well as indoor courts. And getting into the fit of the tens, this is where I think the way of wades kind of fork in the road from some other shoes. The forefoot in these is a little bit more ergonomic, which means it's actually made more toward the shape of a foot, a little bit more of a wider foot, giving more room to the big toe joint, as well as the fifth, where you get a tailor's bunion. And we've seen that kind of forefoot design on some running shoes, namely Ultra makes a little bit more of an ergonomic or anatomic forefoot. And when in basketball, typically the shoes taper a little bit more to give them a little bit more performance. They're more streamlined, kind of easier to get up off the ground. Whereas in the way of weighed tens, the forefoot shape makes them ultra stable underfoot. The pivoting power of these is just incredible, but they don't cut through the air like something a little bit more streamlined, say something like the Curry 9, stuff that really kind of tapers in the forefoot. So it's interesting because they're gonna fit different players a lot differently. Someone that likes a little bit more of that splay in their foot to kind of feel the ground a little bit more, it's gonna like these more versus someone that likes a little bit more of an aerodynamic and streamlined shoe, kind of like the Nike Zoom Freak 3 is gonna like that profile more. But I think the biggest takeaway of the fit of these is how many foot ailments these things can accommodate, kind of like the Jordan Zion 2. They're gonna be great for heel pain, arch pain, and especially ball of foot pain, because that carbon fiber can kind of shield it underneath of it where your foot doesn't have to feel that stiff shank. And that's what I really like about these, is that if you're someone that's a little more snake bitten, someone like me, you know, more the aging warrior, you're gonna get a little bit more protection on court from these, which is something that I think is desperately needed in the basketball space, especially among my age group of mid 30s wannabes. And so speaking of that fit profile, in terms of playability, these are a real tweener type shoe. They can be used as a more maximalist or big athlete type shoe. They can also be used for something a little bit more nimble. Now, no, they're not gonna be as nimble as something like the Anta KT7 or the Curry Flow 9, but because of the profile of the forefoot, you have so much stopping power. You can make such violent cuts and really be able to get up on the power really quick because these shoes stop, pivot, and cut so well. So if you're someone that really needs to explode on the court or that's just kind of how you play, this midsole is going to keep your foot and leg feeling pretty fresh, whereas some other people might start getting lower back pain or knee pain after a really aggressive type game, especially in the paint. And so I think the best use case of the tens is getting yourself out of really hairy situations, especially if you're backed into a corner. If you're really being guarded heavily, or if you're someone that's a real lockdown type defender, these shoes can really hold their ground well, especially if you're someone that's trying to play extremely close to somebody and trying to really match somebody footwork for footwork. And when I was playing these, especially more on hardwood courts, I kept coming back to just thinking about confidence. These really just gave me confidence to pivot really hard, confidence I got to go up for rebounds, go up for layups, and my landings were not gonna hurt my lower back, and I was gonna be able to spring back up for the next shot. So I think if you're someone that's really more of a confidence confidence player or really kind of throws your body around and is looking for a shoe that is going to grip and not really give out on you, especially on hardwood, like I said, then these are going to 
be some of the best on the market. If you're someone that plays really hot, humid conditions on blacktop asphalt, these are going to have a little bit more give on you. So I would say if you're looking for a shoe for just max performance on a hardwood court, I really don't think it gets any better than these. But of course, I'd love to hear your opinion, especially at the price point of the tens. Are you looking to pick these up or are you going somewhere else? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you want to see the rest of the best new shoes of 2022, make sure you click into this video up above and subscribe down below. Respect your rubber and foam and full length carbon fiber shanks that have left my desk completely shattered in carbon fiber. I'll see you in the next video.